Welcome to the Tricord Advisors podcast, where we answer life's hard questions to help you make smart decisions with your money. I'm Jeremiah Lee, and this is Randy Barkley. We're both certified financial planners. I'm also a California licensed attorney. We're going to be talking about legacy issues today. We're kind of taking uh, through the last several weeks, we're kind of taking through some of the key aspects of financial planning. And what we're going to be talking to right now about is legacy. Now, most people think legacy means money, assets, mm -hmm. estate, so, estate planning, a fine, yes. uh, like uh, estate planning, financial. But what we want to talk about, we'll probably touch on that today, but yeah. we also want to talk about there's more to legacy issues than money and assets, yeah. right? And legacy in, in my mind with this profession that we're in is one of the biggest items that people are not quite sure how to talk about. Right. You know, they're not quite sure how to express what they're feeling or what they need, but it's so important. And we, we, we've talked with ourselves and with clients, like if, if you're going to watch a basketball game and you're going to watch one quarter, it's going to be the fourth quarter. That's the most interesting. And especially- That's the only time that you've got, right? Yeah, right. And if, especially if both teams have done well over, their, over the course of the game, the fourth quarter is where all the intrigue is. And the same is with life. If, if someone has done well in their life, they've had a career, they've raised a family, like the fourth quarter is the most interesting. And it, people, I think, have this, this perception that I'm done now. I've retired. I've raised my family. Right. I'm done. But but that is one not not satisfying and fulfilling. But but two, there's so much of life that is that is available. You know, in that fourth quarter, and so interesting to look at your overall um, kind of finances and your overall life and your overall what you're passing on to the next generation. So when, I, when we talk about legacy planning, we're not just talking about money. We're talking about a, a, a big bucket of things. And and one, I think that's, you know, we're just going to, I want to talk about it first is, is just not running out of money. Right. There's a lot of folks who they've lived a good life. You know, they have done well professionally. They've been respected in their careers. They've, they've raised a good family and they don't want to fall from that position, you know, in their family and their friends, even for themselves, they don't want to fall from that. So they don't want to find themselves on the street or find yeah. themselves needing. So we spend a lot of time with clients and this is, this is for investing side of it, but I think, I think it's a good interjection right now. We spend a lot of time with clients coming up with what their required rate of return is. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when clients reach a certain point, they don't need to take the same risk that they took earlier in their life. Yeah. So what we try to do is to find out what that required amount. But once we've accomplished that, then we start talking about what is it that you want to do with your wealth? And that's the that's the financial aspect of legacy planning. Yeah. But we oftentimes get into conversation about what money is for and how you're going to use it mm. and what this, you know, this inheritance, what 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 are you going to do this? Not only with your children, your grandchildren, or other places that yeah. it goes with, right? Well, and you made a comment to a number of clients of saying that no one will appreciate your money as much as you do. Right. And I think it's a really valid comment that people who worked hard, saved hard, scrimped, sacrificed you know, put into retirement, they've done all these things along the way. No one, even their kids, their family members, even great organizations that are doing great things in the community, they're not going to appreciate that nearly as much as the person who scrimped and saved, you know, to, to get there. So, so I think number one, people, you know, as they think about legacy planning is that they want to maintain their, I don't say lifestyle, but they, they don't want to run out. They don't want to have that, hey, he did great, but then, oh man, he ended up in the poor house or whatever it may be. Right. So they want to finish well. But part of that also, and I think here's the, the social aspect where it gets away from money, is continuing with their family and their friend and kind of their social position, I guess. And that's, I think, a tricky one because you have someone who feels that they're the you know, matriarch or the patriarch of their family and they're respecting their community and they're contributing to their community. And then they retire and they're getting a little older and they want to maintain that same level of um, involvement or same level of social status, but it, it has to shift and it has to shift with them. And that's part of, I think, a legacy is is kind of aging, aging well, transitioning well, because um, that that matriarch patriarch mantle, you know, if you want to call it that, needs to pass to the next generation. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that that person who you know passes it smoothly, their legacy to say I'm now inspiring and and pushing forward the next generation. There's some beauty there, um, but but it's 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 a bigger conversation and it it's is. a bigger thing to think it about. Is. Yeah, I think I think um, for all of us, I mean, I'm older than you, and what I have tried to accomplish is knowledge is really important to me. Mm -hmm. I, always, I always tell my wife, I said, you read for pleasure. I read for knowledge. And I'm constantly trying to seek information that can not only benefit myself from a financial standpoint, but also mostly to provide good, wise counsel to my clients. And everybody comes with a myriad of issues. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, somebody who's never had children, 
uh, somebody who's married several times, somebody who's built a business, somebody who's done this. What we try to do, and we talked about it last time, is we try to help people not make major mistakes. Mm. And I always go back to a comment that a, that a wise man told me. He said, like raising children, allow your children to fail small. Mm. He said, make sure that you 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 give them the opportunity to take on a project or mm-hmm. money or whatever and watch what they do with it. It's like loaning money to a child. A child comes to you and says, "Will you, you know, will you loan me some money? Mm-hmm. I've got I've got a I've got a spot in my life where mm-hmm. I need some help." And and I'm not opposed to that, but I am opposed to using primarily loan, but I want to see what the child does. Mm-hmm. They make a verbal commitment to a parent or a grandparent did they follow through with that? Did they pay it back? If they said, I'll pay you interest, did they pay the interest? Mm. Those are things that are really important in building mm. character, but also understanding the character of the individual, the family member, or whatever. That's so, right. Yeah, I think that's, um, I guess that's, that's two prongs you're going to talk about. You know, one is continuing your own social, you know, aspect as you, as you age of, of you know, for someone to say, okay, I want to travel, I want to do this, but also passing on those, those values, right. right? That, you know, hard work ethic. I mean, I, I have many memories, you know, working with my dad of digging holes. We put a roof on a house once, you know, our house, we helped him roof it. Like, like things where it's just hard work and you get halfway through the day and you're tired. You yeah, don't want to do it anymore. It's time to quit. And you're right. going, your dad goes, no, yeah, we're, the job's we, not we, done. Yeah, we got to keep going. going. And, and he passed on a legacy to me of, of the ability to work hard. Right. And I think um, that's so valuable in any area of life I go into the, the idea that I know I've got another gear. Mm-hmm. I know that if things get hard, I can keep going. And man, that, that, what a legacy, you know, for someone who's a hard worker to pass that to their kids. Um, you talked about knowledge, you know, just to pass on good lessons and good things. And I, I think there's a lot of families, at least that we've spoken with our clients, that this is really easy and really natural. There's a lot of families where this is not easy and this is not natural. They weren't trained by their parents. Right. Or their kids don't want to hear it. Their right. kids don't want to listen. Right. There's almost a rebellion pushback, right? Yeah. And, and at any age, I mean, we've had clients, their kids are fifties and, you know, they're trying to help impart something and it's just not getting through. Um, so I think that's, that's when we think of planning, you know, at any age, you know, the, when I talk about legacy planning, like it's not just your money, you know, and that's, I think what we'll spend more time on it also is, is talking about what, what are you going to do in, in the fact, in the sense of finishing out your fourth quarter, finishing out your life. So when people look at your life, they say, wow, you they did. finished well, right. I would really like to finish like, like they did, but also that your kids kind of continue or your kids, your family or community, whoever's in your life, that they would continue you know, building on what you've built, whether it's right. knowledge or skills or or morals or values. I mean, I think that's, um, yeah, so, a really key thing. Yeah. So the legacy issues. I mean, obviously, the practical side of it is is having a proper will, having a proper your beneficiary designations. We could take take a client through the steps, yeah, and make sure that we've examined all the documents to make sure that they've done the right things. I mean, and that's what we do with our progress yeah. meetings, and we we update. I just just talk to not only you, but also to another attorney that we've worked with for a number of years. We're reviewing and we're reviewing an estate plan. Those are the practical sides of it. But more importantly is the psychological, the yeah. emotional, the value that you're trying to uh, adhere to or pass on to your children. Um, and it's it's really interesting when you get into some of these esoteric mm. uh, statements and you, as planners, we pick these things up from our clients. Well, what is, can we dig this? Can we kind of flesh that out mm-hmm. a little bit more? Can we dig a little bit deeper? What is it you're trying to accomplish? And oftentimes we have the privilege of seeing a client really reach down deep to get his true value, get their true value yeah. and say, this is really what I want. Yep. Why is that? Why Why is that important to you? And it starts to come out and you start to realize there's some deep issues that are rooted down in that person's emotions about what they want to accomplish. Yeah, that's great. We had a client, I'll just tell a quick story. We had a client that um, he was retiring and had plenty of funds for himself. And he wanted to do the planning to say, how much of this money can I give away without breaking my retirement, w- without really running out of money? And that was one of the first people who done it, but we kind of flipped the planning rather than saying, do I have enough? We said, okay, yeah, yeah you, ha- you have enough. But he wanted to know on a monthly basis or an annual basis, what he could give away. And he had, you know, some local family, but he said, you know, if, if all his nieces and nephews got, you know, a couple thousand dollars for Christmas, you know, something like that, right. like how much could he do and how far could he go down that path without jeopardizing his own future? And it was great planning. I really enjoyed it. It was, it was a really good comment to him that he didn't, of course, want to run out. He wanted to, you know, continue his own personal legacy to the end of his life. 
But you know, if he in his mind, if he died with a hundred bucks in his account and you know right. a full family and happiness, and he'd pass all this stuff out, and he got to see the fruits of what he was giving away. Man, uh, he would have loved that, and you know that that was the the idea of what he was planning for. And so there's that aspects like that. I always tell people when they're doing estate planning, like what is what what are you going to pass on to your kids? That's just going to supercharge their life. Mm-hmm. Not that it's going to you know cause them to lose their work ethic or make really bad choices or become you know manipulated by others, but rather what is just going to spur them forward. Um, right. And, and times money helps with that, but but it's it's such beyond that to to think of what are you really trying to accomplish here. And how can you benefit, you know, your your family or those around you with your legacy? And that, like I said, that being your morals, that being your your time, that being the values that you care about, that also being your resources. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you pass all those things on? But yeah, he was a great client. I've, I've brought that into many other clients now to, to as part of their planning to say, okay, wh- now that you've made it, now that we've planned out that your retirement's okay, what could you do with this? How far could we go? And to kind of stress test this as far as giving stuff away. And a lot of what we do is is to come back to that. You know, I, I have the philosophy that we're not here just to build up extra cordwood. Mm. You know, in other words, just to build up extra wood. Once you have enough money, once you have enough assets that maintains your lifestyle, and we know for with a high degree of certainty that you're going to be fine. Um, the question is, how how does this? I mean, what kind of work do you do? I mean, where where does it? Where do you mm. stop? And it, there was a book that I that I read, and I, the author. It was as though he was eavesdropping on a conversation mm. between two guys, and they were at a very wealthy individual's home, and uh, they were talking about how successful this man was. And the one man's comment to the other man, he says, "I'll have something that he'll never have." And he, and the other man looked at him. He says, "What is that?" He said, "Enough." In other mm. words, he was happy with where he was financially, and he wasn't trying to build a bigger barn mm. with more stuff in it. He was happy with where he's at, and yeah. he was satisfied that he had reached a certain level, and that he could maintain his existence, and he was financially free. Yeah, I mean that's really that's really important. I mean, right? what, what beauty to get to a point in your life, you know, at any age, but especially in your retirement, to say, "I have enough. Right, I no longer need to keep my eyes on myself. I can now look to my family, to my community, to others, and say, I, I'm happy. I'm mm-hmm. content. I have enough. And in fact, for a lot of our clients and a lot of other people, I have I have excess. I have extra. I have surplus." And I can use this as a resource to accomplish whatever I think mm-hmm. is useful, whether it's for my family or for others. But man, I mean, to, to get to enough, I mean, that, that is, and I think in our American culture is um, a, a difficult thing to say, yeah. I have enough. Yeah. We're going to continue our conversation on legacy planning, and we invite you to stay tuned. We're going to talk, we're kind of expand this a little bit further and to find out what financial freedom really means to you. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. <music> 